What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Scale News Update. If you're not familiar with this show, this is where we talk about the news topics that happened in the scale world of RC over the last week. If you enjoyed these videos, hit the like button before you leave, subscribe if you're not already, and hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. We have several topics to cover for this week, so let's jump into them. First topic is not RC related, but Last week on Friday was the big race at King of the Hammers, the 4400 class, always a really interesting race to watch. If you're not familiar with full size ultra four racing, it's worth going back, pulling up the live feed and just kind of skimming through, or at least watching the hour before the first finisher crosses the line. It was a super exciting race this year. And this year, the first place and second place finishers were both solid axle cars. It's always interesting to see the battle between IFS and solid axle and how that works out. Overall, a really exciting race with a lot of lead changes, a lot of breakages. Josh Blyler won in a solid axle Miller Pro chassis and Eric Miller came in second in a Miller Pro chassis. So one, two cars, basically very similar overall, but an awesome race again to watch. Highly suggested if you didn't watch it. I'll link to the live feed and I'll try and find a timestamp to link you to so that it's you know, the interesting last portion of the race at least. But jumping into actual RC related news, last week we had two new releases of new wheels from Vanquish under the Incision line. We had the KMC Whole Shot, which is a kind of outside the box style design of one of the new KMC wheels. I personally really like this style overall. It's just, it's a little bit different, a little bit more out there, but overall I think it looks great, especially when mounted up and then the other style is the new kmc panzer and this is kind of a heavy duty look it's got 12 hub screws in the center only six of them actually go into the hub like normal and then the other six just screw into the hub itself so you don't have to remove all of them to get that cap off this wheel looks really good on a truck or military themed build. These are both under the incision line. And if you're interested in finding these, I'll link you to both of the products in the description below. Then we had two new versions of vehicles released from RC four wheel drive this week. These are the BF Goodrich 150th anniversary edition vehicles. You can choose between either a Mojave or the cruiser body that they have. So two Toyota options. This has a red, white, and blue theme to it. It's got the new Yoda two axles underneath of that TF2. Those are a little bit more updated axle compared to the previous versions. We covered that a couple of weeks ago. And then with those BFG tires, it's also got kind of an old school, cool looking, almost like American racing outlaw style wheel. I believe RC Fuel Drive actually calls these the Ion and they're a 1.7 wheel. So kind of that oddball between a 1.55 and a 1.9. And then the cruiser version also comes with kind of that retro look American racing wheel style. I can't remember exactly the name of it, or maybe it's the outlaw and the other one. I don't remember, but either way, but they're both kind of cool options. If you want a pre-painted BFG themed body, if you're not specifically looking for this red, white, and blue uh, paint scheme though, I don't know that you're going to see a ton of new on here. That's going to overly appeal to you compared to one of the more standard options that they've offered in the past. Several weeks back, there was kind of a video that got floated around all of the RC community of this, I think it was like a station wagon or Ghostbusters looking station wagon, driving around with some real floaty looking scale style suspension. And it was just really cool overall, you know, kind of like kind of viral, you can almost call it. But the electronics that drove that setup are now officially being offered for sale. These are being offered for 75 euro. And what you get is mainly the control module. From there, you still have to add four servos, you have to fabricate everything to mount them to the base vehicle that you're going to use. But it's just a, a cool little setup if you specifically want something that looks floaty and just kind of cool and interesting. By no means do I think this is something that's for everyone. I think this is for someone who's just really looking for that scale look. And I think more specifically, this is a very on-road based application. I don't know that I see this being a real great system for something that's going off-road or going very fast since it looks like you're pretty much losing the suspension and just going with servo driven. So it's, so it's for realism in video mainly. If you saw the video previously though, you probably saw how cool and dramatic it looked, especially on just some hardwood floors someone was filming in their living room, presumably, but it was interesting. It's something that I'm thinking I may have to pick up myself because it just, it looks cool. Why not try it? 
because of course adding another project to the piles and piles of unfinished projects is not a bad enough idea as it is. And speaking of piles and piles of unfinished products, the countdown to Sorka Scale Nationals 2020 is still going on. I think we've got 38 days left until the event. And if you haven't seen, I've got a video series where I'm going through the three trucks I'm attempting to get put together before the event. I'll link to that series above and you can check that out if you're interested. Matt from the Scale Builders Guild and myself will be down at Logandale for the Sorka Scale Nationals to do a little bit of emceeing at the event for the awards or raffle and all that good stuff. Looking forward to that. I think that's going to be a really good time. And if you're not gonna make it, we're still gonna put out a bunch of content you know, from the event or after the event and leading up to the event while trying to get these vehicles done and then all of the fun that we get to have while we're there. And for the next story, we've got some more government stuff coming in and I'm not getting political and I don't like politics. I'm keeping politics out of this. We see enough of that every day. But what we have here is the FAA trying to put in some new regulations that are greatly going to affect model aviation mainly. Now, this isn't coming into specifically the ground based stuff yet. Of course, it could all snowball and turn into something that affects all of us. But the biggest focus here is the, you know, drones, as they call it, and how that, you know, affects airspace and the things that it could possibly uh, cause or people could use to cause harm, things like that. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to mandate that every aircraft, drone, anything has this ID transmitting system that can at all times transmit the location of whatever model it is and the pilot. And I believe that it has to actually live transmit it basically like over cellular signal. So while it would be easy for something like a DJI drone with a software update to transmit via the phone that normally connects it, that's still something that seems to be creeping into overkill and I'm not overly a privacy you know, concern. I mean, obviously I put videos up on the internet of myself all the time, but it's not even really the worst part. The other thing is, is that basically every model, I mean, you can build an RC plane out of almost anything. Park flyers are, they're so basic. There's almost nothing to them. But now all of a sudden, even those would possibly have to have this transmitting ID set up to it, or they would have to fly at what is designated as a FRIA or basically a a flying area you know that's been established and you have a certain amount of time to define these frias and then after that is done no more can ever be added so as time goes and communities grow and they overtake places that people have designated as flying fields things are just slowly going to erode away basically taking out the ability for the model aviation community which is massive to exercise and have fun with whatever you know they have built and created and it's just another seems like overstepping legislation that's being tried to uh, put forth onto a community that even if you're not directly into at least tangentially affected by just because we are all in the rc community and development that gets done on model aircraft radios either is parallel to or trickles down to possibly our ground-based stuff all of it matters and as a rc hobbyist i think that everybody should be concerned about this type of thing so even if it doesn't directly affect you right now if you find the time, go educate yourself on this just a little bit. And if you find yourself with a little bit more time yet, submit your comments, just politely expressing your concerns of how you think this is something and, or how it would directly affect you possibly if you're someone who does enjoy to fly. This could affect you in many ways. I mean, Horizon Hobby owns so many of the brands right now and flying is a big part of their company. If they all of a sudden lose a huge chunk of their revenue, how does that affect their ability to possibly supply you with the next new car that you want? It's just, I feel that this is important. If you can find the time, try and go educate yourself on this topic. I'll link you to the best video that I can find on the topic. I've watched a few of them, just trying to familiarize myself enough with the topic to express it to you guys. And again, I'm not trying to get overly anti-government or pro, I'm, this is just RC, that's all I care about. But 
away from the serious stuff and onto something stupid and fun. Specifically yesterday, I was doing a video on my road to scale nationals thing. And I was talking about my class two build. And in there I plan on putting an interior and in the interior I had said specifically that I really didn't want to put a driver figure if I didn't have to for the scale points. And someone had made an interesting comment on there and I thought that it would be just an interesting discussion to have with people. And the comment was, why don't you like to use driver figures? They said that they just can't watch videos without driver figures because it just doesn't seem right. And in a lot of ways, I totally understand that whole, you know, ghost rider, you know, it's, someone has to drive a vehicle for, you know, in real life. Like that's how things, other than the Hyundai Smart Pack video, you're pretty much always gonna see somebody driving a vehicle, I guess, or Tesla or Matt's funky six by six Arduino thing. It's one of those weird little hangups that I have myself. And I'm not saying, I know that this is just a weird hangup that I personally have about building these things. I really like to build model cars. I am by no means ashamed of that. I really enjoy it. I enjoy getting into the fine details of certain things, but I really specifically like the mechanical aspects of things and how things are done in the full size world and how they can kind of trickle down or how we can try and replicate them in our world. What I don't like, or the part that I don't like is, you know, the it's, you know, buying a little figure and bending his arm. So it looks, it just seems weird to me. I get it. It's, I don't know why. I don't know why that that's the, 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 we, the line I draw in the sand, like, Oh, this is where it goes too far for me. It doesn't make any sense. I fully understand that. But I, I just, it's the hiccup that I have. So that was the discussion point I wanted to put out there to you guys. Like, how do you feel about driver figures? Are you a person that has to have a driver figure in there to make it look realistic, which is totally acceptable? Or are you on the other side where you just, you know, you don't like playing with dolls? You know, <laughs> where do you sit on that? Oddly, I really like the Axial Bomber style interiors with like the half molded in driver figures. I, I like those better. I like that like half molded interior where I can just screw that, you know, ABS or styrene helmet on top of it. And then it, I've got an interior with a driver. It's kind of silhouetted in there. You can't clearly see it. It just looks kind of right in video, but you don't actually have to get like a little figure and put it in there. I prefer that style. That is my favorite style, but I am fully aware of how odd these preferences are. But I wanted to just throw that out there. See if any of you guys had the same trepidations that I do specifically about this topic. But that will do it for the scale news for this week. I hope all of you guys have an awesome rest of the week. Thanks to all of you guys who come here every Tuesday for the scale news. I appreciate it. Hit the like button if you enjoy and subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one.